This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. <laughs> Talk about dumping him on his butt. A fisherman. Wow! Shark fishing with a topwater. A conservationist. Don't be bashful. Go on out. A family man. Woo, baby. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Welcome to North Texas and to Trophy Ridge, where on today's show we're going to be showing you some great big whitetail deer. I'll be introducing you to the smartest man that I know in the deer business, and we're going to discuss, can you have a fair chase hunt inside a game preserve? I think you're going to like this one. Hi, I'm Dick Kane. My wife and I own Trophy Ridge Whitetails, St. Joe, Texas, which is about an hour and a half north of DFW Airport right along the edge of the Red River Valley. We've had this ranch since 2002, and when we bought it, we started putting in some deer pens. We've had deer in the pens for almost 10 years. We've gotten about 300 deer in the pens, and we've got a pretty good sized ranch here. It's diversified farming. We raise cattle, we bale hay, we raise wheat, and we raise white-tailed deer. So we started farming deer because we really are passionate about deer. We really like deer and we wanted to see if we couldn't provide the best habitat we knew how to provide for deer. And then we got into the deer farming part of it to see if we couldn't improve the genetics of the deer. I enjoy going to work every single day farming deer. It's not just a casual thing, it's pretty much a full-time deal. I mean, we work eight to five, just like we did in the business world, but we put it in doing something we really enjoy and it's just really fun to see the progress that you can make deer farming. Come on, boys. These are all uh, yearlings, first year boys. Come on, boys, come on. Percentage wise, how many of these are AI versus live cover? No, this is a mixture. Some are live, some are AI. Yeah, that one yearling over there in the other pen is huge. Yeah, he is. He's gonna be the one that's gonna come put in with three or four yeah, does. Yeah, he'll, he'll be the one that's going with, with uh, about four does. That's a pretty deer. And he's a yearling and he'll be want, he'll be he'll wind up with some of those does to live cover. There's a couple of small ones in there, but in most cases those are pretty uniform yearlings. That's the object to get a uniform group of them. And you notice most of them are very typical looking. They're, they got a few flyers and kickers, but they're Pretty uniform. Pretty clean. Your pins are big, really big. For the bucks, they are. Do you cut the horns off? Well, we have in the past, in some years, we do. But um, bigger pin, you don't have to worry about it. Now, mm -hmm. you realize this is their first set of antlers. Mm -hmm. When they get older, I can't keep this many in a pin. I don't care how big it is. Right. But as yearlings, you can. These guys have been with each other, I guess, since they were weaned? Since they were born. Yeah, since they were weaned, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So they pretty much got the pecking order lined out. They know sure. who's who. And sure. Sure. You may have a little scuffling going on, but you, they know who the daddy is. Come on, boys. You want some of these? All right, come on. Come on, boys. This one's got a nice little drop on him right there. Mm -hmm. That's a nice little year right there. Yeah, he's a nice little yearling. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you stop and think that most of the yearlings in the wild are like that little spike or forked horn. Mm-hmm. Now, the one along the fence on the far left has got a flyer on one side, and he's got a little bit of blood on there, which indicates he's starting to rub off. Mm-hmm. You can see the red. Got a little bit of blood on there where he's starting to rub off. Looks like he might have broke a tine because he had a pretty matching set, so he may have broken a tine. Hmm. Yeah, but they're just about done. Yeah, it's the third week of August right now. Actually, it's uh, the end of the third week of August. So, you know, it was August 21st, 22nd, something like that. So, 
Yeah, they're getting ready. But usually they, they get started rubbing pretty seriously by uh, 1st of September. If you like the way our show looks on your television set, you're gonna absolutely love it when you see it in full HD online. And you can watch it on my website 24-7 free of charge at keithwarren.net. Take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. The bucks in this pen, these are two-year-olds and the pens uh, the older the bucks get, the bigger the pens Dick is going to put them in so they have more opportunity to get away from each other. But regardless of whatever size pen is, all deer need to have shade. Not just the bucks, but the does and the fawns, they all need to have shade. And uh, there are trees in the pens, but in, in uh, every pen you're going to see shade. Little shade shelters like this one behind. And that's just to give the deer an opportunity to get in out of the hot sun because it does get hot here. If you want to come out and you want to take a look at the deer that Dick's got, he invites you to come on out. Uh, you can contact him, but uh, one thing I want to point out, if you're interested in deer farming and you'd like an opportunity to win a deer farm, we've got a sweepstakes going on, winadeerfarm.com, log on to it, somebody, we're going to set them up with a deer farm. Some of the tools we use in our genetic program um, have helped us become very successful. Probably the most important is the pedigree or parent verification that we do through the North American Deer Registry. And that's allowed us to know for sure who the sire, who the dam are. But then more importantly, if we buy semen or when we sell deer, we're able to say, here's the lineage of that animal. Here's what the doe side looks like. This doe came out of a 240 inch buck. This doe came out of a buck that was 180 inches at one year of age. So we have a, a real trail that we can use in our genetic breeding for our deer. Another tool we use is a computer program to keep up with all our records. This business has gotten really too complicated, so many records to keep and so forth, that a pad of paper just doesn't do it anymore. So we use a computer inventory program produced by GMS, and it helps us keep up with the pedigrees. When we've given vaccinations, we keep up with what deer that various does and bucks have produced. It's a tool that really helps us keep up with our business. So who are these bucks down here? Those are two-year-olds. We separate them out when they're two to where they're about 10 or maybe 12 in these pens. These are fairly large pens, but there's a lot of social interaction, so when they get that age, we try to reduce the numbers. There'll be a couple in there that will be real nice prospects for breeders, and the rest of them are great prospects for pasture breeders. Mm -hmm. um, they're clean cut for the most part. They're very typical looking bucks. They've got a few flyers and kickers and drops to get them up to, there's a few of those that'll get real close to 200 at two years of age. Mm -hmm. But our goal is to have them at three years of age in that category to where they're in the 175 to maybe 220, something of that nature. And that's basically what most of the hunters that we provide stockers for are looking for stuff in that uh, pretty clean cut, wide framed 200 inch range. Yeah, yeah, okay. or, or you know, maybe a little less. I mean, a 200 inch deer, That's five right. years ago, you know, you didn't find them in the wild very often, and you still don't. That's why the genetics of putting out pasture breeders has, has been pretty successful. Hey, look, Buck's standing right yeah, there. Yeah, look at that, he's, he's up there making a browse line. Wow. They, they love eating the leaves, the fresh growing green leaves, and that's what makes a browse line. That, you can tell exactly how high they can reach, and that was out in the pasture, that's way too many animals when you see a browse line like that. That's gotta be five to five and a half feet tall, I would think. I'm thinking, yep. A couple things to notice, you'll notice that there's black plastic on the pins by the alley. We use the black plastic on both sides of that alley so that when deer are moving to the handling facility, they're not distracted by the deer that are in either pen on the other side. We try to move them to the handling facility in a group so they're all going the same direction at the same time. Another thing you may notice is the feeder in here is just a, a basically a single day's food supply feeder because we feed them every day with what they'll need for that day. Then the white half plastic barrel is what we feed our alfalfa in. We give them just a partial flake of alfalfa every day so they get fresh food every day. So if somebody wants to talk to you about buying deer and, or uh, having deer bread and then purchase them later on down the road, whatever, give them a telephone number to call. 940-995-2121. But probably easier to remember is our website, which is trophyridgewhitetails.com. All right, here's one for you. Two bucks got locked together. 
up here in North Texas out of St. Joe, Texas on Trophy Ridge. During the rut, these guys were fighting and both of them are really big, good trophy deer. Now let me know what you think their combined score is, gross score, combined now. And the person who gets closest, we're gonna send you a cool gift pack from Wildlife Research Center. Take a look at these guys now. Really close. All right, get a back shot of them. Right there. All right. Let's hear what you think. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Deer Guardian Misting Systems, DNA Solutions, and the North American Deer Registry, Four Canyons Ranch, Hoff Power Polaris, the Hunter Heritage Foundation, and Record Rack Deer Feeds. The deer on the far left is, is Bada Boom. He was 32 inches wide last year. He's a five-year-old this year. Those with yellow tags are five. This one right here in front that has the orange tag is four. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue tag ones, which is most of them, are three years old. Mm -hmm. And then there's two red tags, and the red tags are two. Okay. So the bulk of what we're saving here are three-year-olds that we'll use for breeders or sell. I've got uh, three of these are sold mm -hmm. as breeders. Mm -hmm. Normally, we don't keep except one or two deer that are three. They're usually gone at three. So our, our program is set up to market deer at three years of age in trophy quality. Now the next buck over, you see that, that real wide buck that's mm -hmm. uh, blue tag, mm -hmm. that's high performance. He's a Maxbo XL son. It was on a Crab King doe, I mean. So mm -hmm. very wide female genetics, and then uh, okay. XL gave him that uh, rapid growth, I think. Okay, the guy coming up at yeah. the bottom. Who's the one that? just coming through, yeah. the bottom is, that's Hurricane. He's been a really good buck for us because he was very large when he was a two-year-old. And we've used him several years now, and I've got some two-year-old sons out of him that are really nice, big framed bucks. I've got some yearlings that are that are really, really nice out of him. So, okay. Well, are the, these deer in here then? Are they primarily AI babies? All of these are AI babies. Yes. Okay. All of these are AI babies, and we've used them for natural cover in some cases. And what I generally do is I'll put. We got some smaller pens that are just 100 by 100 and I'll put four or maybe five doe in there. Mm -hmm. Usually they're yearling does. Maybe half of them will have twins, the other one half will have singles. Single, right. And uh, so I'm not making a huge genetic commitment on yearling bucks. If I put a yearling buck with those does, or maybe a two-year-old, I can get some babies on the ground from them if they turn out, blow up, become a really nice three-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't, then you know I just haven't spent a whole lot of does on them. Most of the time, we don't collect semen from bucks that are yearlings, usually two-year-old would be the youngest I'd collect because for me, there's a huge difference between a yearling and a two-year-old and what they're mm -hmm. gonna be, what they're gonna look like. Okay, what, what Dick's talking about here is that, that genetically, it's all genetics when it comes sure to it raising big deer, it's all genetics. And because these are all, the reason why I asked if they were AI babies is because the way we have brought a big influence genetically in the herd is by artificial insemination. Exactly. And so what's happened, now that it was in, it was brought into his herd, now he's able to naturally breed some of his deer. But most deer farmers don't want to breed yearlings because they're not really proven. They're proven genetically, but antler-wise, they may not have it yet. So what Dick's doing is pretty smart. He's going to get some babies on the ground, not very many, but he's going to get some in case the guy blows up. Then he's a year ahead of the game or two years ahead of the game. You know, I, we've tried, like many, and like many people, we've tried a lot of different things over the last 12 years. And I mean, I did breed some fawns, you know, you get them. But what I found, at least in Texas, for me, it does not work to breed fawn, whether they're the buck fawn or the doe fawn, because our offspring comes so late. Usually it'd be August, September, right? That's okay for a doe fawn, all, uh, because they'll, you know, they, they catch up. They'll usually only then have one offspring in the, you know, the next year. But for bucks, they're always a year behind. So you can have the greatest genetics in the world, but they're a year behind. So they never can catch up. They just, they really don't pan out for us. See, I, I, I wound up when I started, I, I was doing breeding the fawns and all of a sudden I realized that real quick and I stopped breeding fawns. Yeah, it's like, yeah. wait a minute, wait till they're yearlings. Now, okay, the buck on the right is a blue tag and this buck on the left is a blue tag. They kind of look similar. Tell me about that. Well, those are womb brothers. They're, they're out of a buck called Escalade. I bred two does with Escalade. One had twin doe fawns, the other had twin buck fawns. So those are the twin buck fawns out of the same mother. You see, they look generally alike, but there's a little difference. You know, mm -hmm. this one on the right, a little heavier mass, a few more points. The one on the left 
his left antler just really didn't quite do it. His right antler looks much more like mm -hmm, this guy's mm -hmm. left antler's missing one tine, so it's a little less impressive. But they look quite a bit alike. I mean, I've named them very cleverly, Escalade Boy 1 and Escalade Boy 2. Well, that's how come <laughs> you're a PhD, <laughs> because you're so smart. <laughs> well, anyway. well, people give them all kinds of wonderful <laughs> names, but you know, in my case, it's that one's that one's blue, <laughs> blue 943 and blue 942. <laughs> there you go. Well, we better move on and look at some more deer before the rain starts. Yeah, it looks like it's going to rain today. We might slide by, but all right, let's yeah, go. That's nice. Okay. One thing about our genetic program we've noticed over the years, often, I think, the generalization. Deer breeders will say, narrow bucks beget narrow sons, wide bucks maybe get wide sons, with some variation in there. And you can tell in this pen of deer right here, there's a, a fairly narrow buck there, yellow 755. He's very massive, got long tines, but his son, right there, the red tag, 021, he is quite wide. He's got flyers on the side. The sire is a five-year-old buck, the son is a two-year-old son, and there's a lot of variation between the two of those. The dam genetics really does have impact. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by WinADeerFarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. It's time for viewer feedback. Brought to you by WinADeerFarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. All right, this one comes to you from the famous Stonewall Saloon that uh, was on the Chisholm Trail right here in St. Joe, Texas. This place was built in 1873. Listen to this one. Tell me, oh great one, how you intend to rally sportsmen behind your goal of hunter unity. Isn't that a bit absurd? I gun hunt and hate archery hunting and will never change my mind. So stop trying to convince me that what we need to do as hunters is to embrace all kinds of hunting. I can't stand some forms of hunting. Jimmy from Arizona. Jimmy, listen up. I really appreciate you taking the time to write that, although I absolutely disagree with everything you said. There's an old saying, we're gonna all ride together in this deal, or they're gonna hang us separately. And as hunters, we gotta all ride together. We gotta all stick together. So although you may uh, say that you can't stand some forms of hunting, I encourage you and others out there like you that have that same opinion to kind of reconsider your thoughts and realize that it's not other hunters that are the enemy. We're your brothers and what we need to do is embrace as brothers, all of us need to embrace hunting together to protect the future of hunting for generations to come. This is an acclimation pasture where the buck deer are brought when they're three years old from Dick's deer farm into this acclimation pasture which is in the middle of his high fence hunting preserve. Uh, at this point, they're acclimated so they can be released into the hunting preserve. Now, this is a really big place, and the habitat is good here, and it's exceptional out inside the ranch. Now, what happens is these bucks get released to be pasture breeders in the rest of the ranch, and when they're mature, they do get hunted, but they get a chance to pass on those genetics. Now, there are people out there that think that, well, it couldn't be fair chase hunting inside of a high fence. I really want to address that with you. My father, he taught me how to hunt ever since I was a little pup. He really had a problem with hunting inside of a high fence. He thought there's no way that it can be fair chase. And because I am a big supporter of high fence, as y'all know, and he knows, I begged him to come. Please, Dad, come here and hunt and just experience what it's like. If you don't like it, then don't shoot one. If you like it, then you like it. Well, he came and he spent a couple of days and he found out that the habitat is in exceptional shape. The hunt is an exceptional challenge. The deer are wonderful, and the hunting behind a high fence, you can have fair chase hunting behind a high fence. I've known Keith for a long time, and I really appreciate the programs Keith puts on because he tries to communicate a real positive message to folks out there. Several years ago, he brought his dad hunting here. His dad was fairly skeptical of hunting on a high fence ranch. When he came here, he saw the habitat, he saw that we offered only fair chase hunting. He was enthusiastic, and it was a real pleasure having both of them here. We've got about 800 of the 1,100 acres under game fence, and that allows us to do some hunting of a deer herd that we are able to manage completely. In other words, we provide the genetics, we provide the nutrition, we provide the habitat improvement, we've managed the habitat 
for the maximum amount of edge between cover and open area. And we manage the deer herd such that it's about the same size year after year after year. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know if I'd want to hunt on a high fence place or not. Fair chase is an ethics thing. And I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think it was fair chase here. We've got an open invitation here to anybody that wants to come and look at our deer. You give us a call, you come take a look at our deer, and I think you'll be mighty pleased at what you see. The phone number is 940-995-2121 or go on the web at TrophyRidgeWhitetails.com. Give us a holler, come see us. I think you'll like what you see. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer in the country, Hoff Power Polaris. If you'd like to watch full episodes of our programs 24 seven online in full HD, log on to my website at keithwarren.net. There you'll find the shows, but you'll also find a lot of outtakes and behind the scenes videos as well. That's keithwarren.net. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories are provided by Whitetail Genetics. <laughs>